Another great project now on TV is coming out. It's called Nightcap. It's going to be on Pop TV. I love this show because it takes us backstage at a late night talk show. And considering I host my own talk show, it's always fascinating to see what really goes on behind the scenes. Our first in studio guest is joining me. She's one of the stars of the show. Considering I get to do this for a living, I love to see TV turn this type of thing upside down and show us what it's really like behind the scenes. What is it like behind the scenes on Nightcap? Well, behind the scenes on Nightcap, it is um, crazy. We shot it in a teeny tiny uh, a floor of an office building that was also occupied by a few tenants at the time. <laughs> so um, it was always a surprise to see who might wander into frame. Um, but it was, it's its just so funny. This is really Allie Wentworth's baby. Who I she, love, by the way. You and I were talking about we it. We love Allie, her. <laughs> Allie's, Allie's the best. She really is. She's like, she's hilarious, smart, and um, just has, she more than anyone knows what it's like to be behind a, a late night show because she's been on so many of them. Um, so yeah, behind the scenes is just kind of, um, it's a bit of a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> I love you already. All right, all right, I said it, shit show. I love it. I was cursing before we even went on, so it's totally fine. Great. What's everybody getting with this show? So they're going to watch Nightcap, lots of millions of people. What are they going to get from it? Well, all of the millions of people are going to kind of get to see the maybe unsung heroes behind, or heroes is maybe very generous in, in our show, but train not. Wrecks train wrecks <laughs> Yeah. Um, but behind the scenes of the late night show, so you get to see uh, the, the craft service or the chef. Um, there's a really ineffective, hilarious security guard who, like, you're not even sure why he's there. Um, there's a supermodel makeup artist who only does Jimmy's makeup. And then there's Allie, this, like, type A, super driven talent booker. And then I play her assistant, Penny, who um, is very sweet um, and very eager to please very eager to please and she just worships uh she worships stacy so much i need a penny on my show then oh man <laughs> i think everyone needs a penny Every, everybody, everybody needs, a, needs penny. a penny you also get cameos from like legitimately some of the biggest stars in the business how crazy is that um the craziest it was just absolutely nuts to have our guest stars be gwyneth paltrow Whoopi Goldberg, Kelly Ripa, Mark Consuelos. In the first episode, um, I am auditioning to be their surrogate. <laughs> um, so I'm offering up my womb. <laughs> um, so that was crazy. Tim Gunn from Project Runway, who's just, you the know, coolest. He's the awesome. coolest, I most love Tim. kind. Yeah, so well dressed. And not you surprisingly. could like listen to him speak all day. He has that like eloquent way of speaking. He's like, Penny. You look so gorgeous tonight. Like, I, I mean, I look, I sound like a total geek saying No, you, that was very good. You think? That was really good, You're yeah. You're a good actress, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the, in the Tim Gunn episode, I think I did hit, uh, like, maybe I've peaked too soon because I got to work with Tim Gunn um, and a sloth, <laughs> like the animal, the slow-moving sloth, which I died, and then bunnies. You're like, is this real? Is I was this like, real is life? this my real? How did this dream manifest? You're like, I went to NYU to work with sloths and bunnies. Awesome. But it was the inflection was more like, I went to NYU <laughs> to work with sloths and bunnies. Yes. You also have another show coming out, which another one of my favorites, Laverne Cox, oh is on. Oh, my God. Everybody, like, this Doubt looks unbelievable. It's going to be on CBS. You're one of the leads. And uh, what are we getting with Doubt? Um, Doubt is uh, I a legal drama on CBS, and it follows uh, a defense attorneys working in New York, so working for a lot of people who are accused of crimes that they may or may not have committed. And it's like part workplace kind of drama. There's definitely levity. It's definitely funny at times, but it also really gets into uh, some, serious, some serious issues, and you follow one storyline throughout. Uh, and I get to play, I think I'm kind of figuring out there's a bit of a like niche that I'm occupying. I'm playing Katherine Heigl's assistant, Lucy. 
So I got a Lucy and a You're Penny. gonna be the stare. You're right. That's gonna be like you're gonna be at like 20 years from now. You'll be sitting here and you're like, I'm what can Nicole I get? Kidman's <laughs> assistant in this movie. I'll take it. <laughs> Man, I would take their real life assistant, let alone Absolutely. their on, on camera assistant. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you and I were just talking before we got started. I, right before I, I started the show, I was interviewing one of my favorites. I've said that like three times, but they are all one of my favorites, Sterling K. Brown, who's had a monster year. He won the Emmy for OJ. He's now in This Is Us, right. which is like tearing up the world. And him and I were talking about how he's been doing this 15 years, and then he's having this magical year. Like mm. he was struggling to pay bills, and now this is the year where he becomes a major star. You're kind of having that moment, too, which I feel like, Aww. because you've got one show, you've got another highly anticipated show right behind it. Like, when all this hard work starts paying off, like, what's it like for an artist, an actor? Oh, that's, it's such a good question, and I, it's so exciting and inspiring to me when you see that happen. People who, like Sterling, who are incredible and have been incredible, and for whatever reason, you don't know what it is. It's just that's their time. Um, I would I would die and go to sloth heaven if that was really my if if I was having a year even remotely close to that. But um, to me, to work like all I want to do is work, and I've probably done every odd job that you could do. So it's really exciting to actually just have to go from one project to the next project feels like the biggest luxury. Are there moments that you like think about giving up? Like you're you're young. Yes. So like <laughs> like what walk me through some of those moments. Like you're struggling, you're probably waitering, bartending, yeah. whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um it can get it's really it's really hard and you have to just want it really badly. And there have been moments where I was like, do I want to be a marine biologist? Like, maybe that would be good instead. And then the thought of doing something else, however remarkable that career sounds, kind of broke my heart to think about doing something else. So I knew that if I was after happiness in my life, that I would have to continue. <laughs> I'd have to continue with this path. You're like, I got bills to pay. Yeah, so you kind of just do it. But it's there's an interesting thing. I mean, there are times when those jobs are really, obviously, like hard. But I was really lucky. I worked at some great restaurants with great people. And in some ways, those day jobs can actually save you. Because being an actor can be incredibly self-absorbed and a little bit like neurotic in your head crazy so the idea of serving someone and like focusing on it their humbles meal you. It, it humbles you, you and it, it um it's a clear task and there's like a you know you can actually complete it in a day whereas like your long-term goal of continually working as an actor may take your entire life there is something satisfying about just serving and i worked with um Judith Light in um, a play on Broadway, and she's again like I don't. I'm that's so, my girl. That's my girl. I could so she, see that. She's my girl. She is just the best. But I remember talking to her, and uh, she really views acting as a service industry, and you have to like it's your you are serving, like you're there to provide something. And I think it can get easy to think like it's all about me, but I think it. Um, I don't know. I think all those day jobs and all of the life experience is actually very, very helpful and um, makes you makes you a lot more present and um, like appreciative for uh, tiny moments of success, however tiny, even just like not messing up a line. <laughs> yes. What do you think about the movement right now? I feel like there is such a strong movement to create better female roles on television. Mm. I mean, look at the show you're on. Allie is the lead of the show. That's her show, essentially. Yes. What do you think about what's happening right now? Yeah, I, I'm just so grateful, and um, it's it's about time. I mean, I just, and, it, and it's been a long process, and I am so excited for Amy Schumer, like all of these just incredible women, Tina Fey, Amy, I mean, it's just like, and Kate McKinnon, I'm just now just, you're going to lose me now. I'm just going to spiral and just spout off all these names. But um, it's really exciting to see women who have dimension, who are in positions of power, and who um, I've actually been really excited also by Transparent to see yep. women who are 
uniquely beautiful and maybe not wearing all the makeup in the world. And I, I think that it's really just so encouraging. And there's a lot more work to do, um, but I am really feel very excited to be kind of starting out in television when there are so many great shows out there and starting to be some really exciting, uh, really, really just like uh, important work being done by women. And I'm also really excited when I meet you know, female directors and uh, steady cam operators. I just, it's, it's cool. You're yeah. Awesome. You're awesome. I, They're awesome. They better, keep, they better keep your show on for like 10 seasons. I so mean, I please. Oh my God, I'd love it.